Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're just going to be giving you guys an update on the upcoming pattern that we have for the next couple of weeks in the month of June 2020. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family and social media. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know what is your most unusual weather story you have? I love hearing about these. I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. All right, now let's get into this video and you, as you can see, this is actually from June 4th. So just a couple of days ago and look at all the heat around the United States, especially the East coast there. And then also the West coast So the two coasts had the warmest conditions. Also the great lakes had very, very warm conditions as well. Uh, it was, it was nineties for a few days in a row here on the East coast. Now here's today. And as you can see, uh, it's not quite as warm except for maybe Kansas, Nebraska, and the Dakotas there have a very, very hot area there of very far above normal conditions. But for the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley in the Northeast, we see a little bit of a cool down, very, very weak cool down there with the lighter blues. Also the West Coast dealing with the cool down. And then for the Southeast, we're kind of all over the place. It's as we move forward here, this is where things start to get really unique. We're looking at Monday. So this is tomorrow, actually, from the time I'm making this video, June 8th and in the afternoon. Very far below normal conditions there for the Western United States. Also take a look down there for Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. That's our tropical storm actually kind of interacting with the air temperatures, creating some cooler than normal conditions. Very, very typical for that to happen. And then the East Coast is kind of a flip floppy pattern by the time we're reaching Monday. We're about to move on and we're going to take a look at a pattern that's going to be very unique and it's actually going to be quite different than what we've been dealing with for the past few weeks. As you can see, by the time we're reaching about Tuesday at about, uh, let's say 2 p.m. or so, maybe afternoon hours, you can see that for the Western and a lot of the Central United States by this point, we're dealing with that cool down. And what's gonna happen in return is we're gonna see warmer than normal conditions shoot up the Eastern United States because it has nowhere else to go. As you can see, there's colder than normal conditions there for the Western Atlantic as well. So really the Eastern United States is the only place that warm air has to go. Uh, but this is that cool down is going to continuously make its way eastward until it really reaches the east coast. So let's go ahead and move on towards about Wednesday. And you can see that cool down really begins to make its way eastward. And we're seeing the west coast warm up once again. But again, look at the east coast. It's warming up more and more and more because it has nowhere else to go, like I said. Except now it has the west coast to go to. So it is going to switch a little bit. We will see this transition. Uh, but that cold front looks pretty strong there where it divides the cold from the warmth. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of a severe weather event, a pretty weak severe weather event, maybe even more than weak. But at this point, at least weak uh, along that cold front since it's so, so brutal. Uh, it looks to be a huge difference between the cold and the warmth just completely along that cold front. All right, now we're about to move on and we're going to take a look towards Thursday. So we're going to continue to move later and later into the week. And then we're even going to take a look towards the weekend and even the week after that as we head later into June. All right, and as you can see by this point, we're reaching Thursday. And as you can see, the cool down has actually reached a lot of the southeastern United States, the deep south there, and a lot of the south central as well. The New England states and the southeast coast looks to still have a little bit of warmth as well as portions of the Great Lakes. But you can see there is a good connection there from the Midwest and Canada all the way down to the deep south. And that's going to create a pretty potent cool down, I would say. And it's going to get more potent as we move on, actually. Uh, we can see the western United States has fully warmed up by this point, And that's completely in response to this cool down. And it might be the causation of this cool down, actually, as, again, since there's a warm up there. Uh, the cool the cool air really has nowhere else to go except for the eastern United States. That's what we call a positive PNA right there. All right, now let's go ahead and move on towards Friday. And you can see not a lot changes except for that cool down up in Canada really starts to interact with a lot of the Great Lakes more. And also the southeast begins to cool down even further. Again, the mid-Atlantic and the northeastern coast is really the only areas where we see this warm air still holding on. And then the western United States has fully... Uh, been engulfed by this warm up by this point. But as you can see, as we move towards Saturday, we see that cool down really begin to reach the coast, and it's very few areas that are still holding on to the warmth, and they're very weak amount of warmth at that. This cool down is beginning to begin become more potent as we see Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois all reaching those purple statuses, which is about 8 to 16 degrees below average Celsius, which is what I would consider 
far below normal temperatures. Also, the western United States is starting to cool down once more for California, Nevada, and we're seeing the warmth kind of begin to be more inland by this point, and we're really going to see that quickly come to an end there, actually, as we move on. All right, now we're about to move on towards Sunday, and we're just going to continue on to the week afterwards. We're going to see this cool down become even way more potent, uh, and it's going to take up more areas, actually, as well. As you can see, as we reach Sunday, look at all those purples showing up now by Sat or Sunday afternoon, June 14th, even for the western United States as well, but particularly for the Midwest and through the Ohio Valley and the Northeast, as well as the Mid-Atlantic, all of these areas dealing with very far below normal temperatures, exactly seven days from today, actually. Uh, and this is really just going to be uh, a major cool down for this time of year, and it's going to be bringing 70s, uh, I think at the highest for a lot of these purple regions, which is just far below normal, not very typical. And we've been dealing with these conditions throughout May, and they're kind of trying to make a return. It's pretty depressing for people that like warmth, not going to lie. Uh, and I haven't really seen a summer slash springtime with this much consistent cold. Uh, I guess in my entire time I've been paying attention to weather, I haven't seen anything like this. And it's very unique, but I do know that it has happened before. So it's not like unheard of, but very unusual to say the least. Let's go ahead and take it to Monday. And you can see it's really just the same story. There is some warmth trying to creep in for a lot of the southeast and deep south. Uh, let's go ahead and take it to Wednesday. So we're taking a pretty big jump, a two-day jump there. So by Wednesday, this is going to be midweek, June 17th. So we're looking 10 days from now. So we're getting kind of towards the medium to long range here by this point. And you can see that there is a pretty... A large area of cool air still in place there for a lot of these regions like the Midwest, uh, the Great Plains, through the Ohio Valley, and a lot of the Mid-Atlantic and even the Northeast. Uh, but there is a lot of warmth making its way in for the Western United States, the Southern United States as a whole. But really it's just a flip-floppy pattern looking kind of all over the place by this point. And by the time we're reaching Friday, it doesn't really get any better. It's still just looking like a hot mess. Uh, don't really know what to say about this. Don't know if it'll really look like this because this is a very unusual setup here. I don't recall uh, seeing much patterns that look like this in real life. So I think the model is just trying to uh, really just come up with a solution, but it's failing to do so. So I wouldn't take any of this too seriously by the time we're reaching here. I just wanted to take it all the way to the end of the run. And as we take it all the way to the end of the run, uh, it starts to look a little more realistic, actually. We see warm air for a lot of the Great Plains up through the Midwest and the Northeast. And then some cool air for the southeast, and then the west coast looking very cool. Uh, though, with this kind of a pattern in the western United States, I would kind of predict that we'd probably be seeing warmth overall for a lot of the eastern United States, and not really that cool uh, air for the east southeastern United States. But really, this does look like a little bit more of a more realistic pattern. So what we're going to do is we're about to move on, and we're actually going to take a look at the five-day increments on our GFS and Saba model. And we're also going to take a look at that 6 to 10 and 8 to 14-day outlook from NOAA and just see what they think about the upcoming pattern as well. Just get some of their thoughts. All right, and here we are taking a look at the first five-day increment, which is the 7th of June, which is today from the time I'm making this video, towards the 12th. And you can see most of the cool air is in the western United States. And I've been trying to teach you guys about this. This is what we call a negative PNA. And this really encourages warmth for the eastern United States. And you can see it actually does so, considering there's yellows all throughout the central and eastern United States. We do see some cooler air there over the western Atlantic, like I said before. And this really just forces the warm air to go in the eastern United States. There's literally nowhere else for it to go. Uh, and this is what kind of pattern we were in for a lot of the winter actually and this is what fail this is what made a fail failure for a cold and snowy winter is we were locked in a pattern like this and you can't really foresee a pattern like this hardly you kind of can but you can't really foresee a pattern like this very far out and that's why a lot of winter forecasts actually failed last winter is because short-term uh, anomalies like this is what kind of ruled the pattern as well as a positive AO which is really what you don't want the arctic oscillation was just uh, complete failure and that's why we had such a cold spring by the way as well because it finally unleashed after winter was all said and done now looking at the 11th through the 16th of june we see a complete flip warmth for the west warmth for you can see in eastern canada there uh, and a lot of the atlantic and then the cold air is forced to go over the northeastern united states the great uh, the great lakes the ohio valley those areas uh, and this is the kind of pattern that would cause cold 
conditions during a winter, and this is what we didn't have at all last winter. I know, I, I don't know why I'm making this about last winter. <laughs> uh, here's the 17th through the 22nd, and you can see it's a little bit less consistent. It doesn't have a good idea, but it does know that the western United States will probably be warm, which probably means that the southeast and the eastern United States will be a little bit colder. All right, now here's the 6 to 10 day outlook by NOAA, which is going to be for the 12th through the 16th of June. And you can see they think that there will be colder than normal conditions for the eastern United States and the northwestern United States, uh, followed by some warmth there in between. And this is kind of what I made. I made a video a couple days ago. It didn't get a lot of views, but it was for a big cooldown that was upcoming. And this is exactly what I was talking about. So NOAA is definitely on board with that. And then here's the 8 to 14 day outlook, which is never as accurate as the 6 to 10 day outlook, but this is for the 14th through the 20th, and they kind of just have the same thing. I'm sure this one is going to change. Uh, considering they just have the same thing, I think that means their confidence is very, very low this far out. As it should be, it's a very far out forecast, uh, but they have cold for the eastern United States still, and then cold for the northwest still, and then warmth in between still which I think is very unusual to be locked in that specific of a pattern. That's why I'm not really buying into this too much. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what is your favorite weather event that happened throughout history? And uh, CG Raider said, my favorite has to be Dorian as it hit, as it shows how unpredictable as originally it wasn't even supposed to be a hurricane. There were so many things that weren't predicted with that one. I actually, matter of fact, if you go back and look at my videos, I'm pretty sure I was pretty accurate with that one as far as my intensity outlooks. I always thought that it would become a category five and be pretty historically strong. Uh, although I did think it would hit Florida for the longest time, as did everybody else. And then it kind of had that really unprecedented, like sudden turn up north. Dorian was just a fun one to forecast because it was so hard to forecast. It was a very challenging one. Uh, and it was uh, unfortunately so brutal for the Bahamas as well, which is a beautiful area. I love the Bahamas. So it was very unfortunate to see an area like that just came get completely decimated there. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.